Hello, welcome to day 14. Today we're going to be talking about God's omnipresence. But before we dive in, again, let's take a moment to present ourselves to the work of the Holy Spirit as we reflect on God's word together. So today we're talking about God's omnipresence. And even as I say that word, I feel keenly aware that there are many of you who are probably struggling with all the lofty theological long words that we're throwing at you each day. Infinitude, immutability. Yesterday, Pastor John talked about divine transcendence. And before that, there was omnipotence and omniscience. It's a lot of terms. I just wanna say, I see you, you're doing a great job. Hang in there. If you're learning some new words, your God is gonna get bigger. Just like Aslan appeared larger to Lucy in the Chronicles of Narnia. You know, Pastor Jeff mentioned that in day one. So hang in there. These confusing theological words, they can be a little silly, but they do matter. Okay, omnipresence. If I can pick a favorite attribute of God's, I think I'd pick omnipresence. It's, it means that God is always present with you wherever you go. You can't go anywhere to get away from God's presence. I don't know about you, but that is a very comforting thought to me. I love that we open today with reading from Psalm 139. And if you continued reading the rest of the chapter, you would see examples of God's omnipresence and how much he cares about you. But let's dive a little bit deeper in this idea. If God is always with us, why don't we feel his presence? Why aren't we continually aware that we aren't alone, but that the God of the universe is with us wherever we go? Now there's, uh, now there's more than one explanation for this. For example, our, our own sin has a remarkable ability to blind us from the things that would otherwise be obvious. So that's definitely playing a part here. But there is something actually that is far simpler that often gets overlooked. The reason we aren't continually aware of God's omnipresence is because we struggle to remain in the moment. Let me explain. God is not limited by time or space. His presence is as real with me here uh, as he is with you wherever you are watching this video. He's also not limited by time. His presence existed before creation, before even time existed. That's why the Bible tells us in Revelation that he is the beginning and the end. And in Ephesians chapter 1, he says, He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him. So God exists outside of time. However, he created us to live within the limitation of time and space. And let me tell you, we struggle to live within this limitation. We want to be transcendent like God. We want to control our future or, or cling to our past. You see, whenever you feel worried or anxious about something, it's always in the future. And, and this worry and anxiety will drive you to attempt to control your future, though you obviously can't control it. When we, when we live for our future, we are striving to achieve a specific outcome. But this is only a perceived control because we don't really have that control. And likewise, when we can also tend to live from our past, we can let our past define our present and our future. And this happens through regrets or reliving things from our past. You know this is happening when you tell yourself self-deprecating lies like, there I go, I did it again. You're such a failure, you're such a loser. Or you're, you're never gonna be able to do that. These inner dialogues can be debilitating. And anyone who has struggled with depression will identify with this tendency. Now, I want you to hear this loud and clear, that there is no condemnation from me or from God about any of this. In fact, there's no condemnation for anyone who's in Christ Jesus. The, the point I'm making is this. God has created us to experience all of life within the limitation of time. 
Therefore, in the present moment is the only place where you can experience the loving, comforting, and gracious presence of God. I'll say it this way. The degree to which we live from our past or for our future is the degree to which we'll miss God in the present. I'll say it again, and we'll put this up on the screen for you. The degree to which we live from our past or for our future is the degree to which we will miss God in the present. So, if we want to experience God, the first thing we need to do is slow down and live as much of life as possible in the present moment. Because that is where God has created us to be. God's omnipresence is continually inviting us to commune with God in the present moment. So right now you might be asking, okay, that sounds nice, but how do I do that? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> there, there are many things that we can do to help us slow down and get back to the present and remember that God is with us. But right now, I'll tell you the thing that helps me. Anytime I pay attention to my senses, it snaps me back to the present. So there's some real theological depth to the phrase, stopping and smelling the roses. But the same effect can come from our other senses too. So what do you see, smell, hear? What do you feel against your skin? If you're eating something, what do you taste? Now the critical component with this is to let your thoughts move toward prayer. Simply talk to God about what you're feeling. I promise that the more you do this, the more you will be aware that God is with you wherever you go. Praise God for his omnipresence. So today as an exercise, I'd like you to find two times where you do just what I described above, going through each of your five senses. It can be while you're driving to or from work or outside on a walk. Wherever you are, go through your five senses and talk to God about them. That's it. And as I mentioned earlier, this isn't the only way to get back to the present. I'd love to hear what has worked for you. So in the comments below, tell us what has helped you slow down, get back to the present, and remember that God is with you. And as always, if this video was helpful to you, give it a thumbs up and share it so more people can come to worship God for his omnipresence. Thank you for joining us today. Bless you.